Hey guys, it's Dodge and Fusky back again for tutorial number. Fuck knows, I think five. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's a number in between four and five. Yeah. Sorry, we're about that. Uh, but we're going to be doing blending and automation today. Uh, well, an introduction anyway. Uh, I know loads of people wanted us to cover all sorts of different topics. So, um, yeah. uh, a lot of people said mixing and mastering. Uh, we're gonna, very, very briefly, mixing down is something that's taken us probably the best part of 10 years to kind yeah. of train our ears to do. It's not really something we can just say, all you want to do is do this, because it's different all the time. You've just got to use your ears. I know that's difficult and might be. Well, you know, in all the tutorials, we'll say little things like, you know, with this drum, you know, like in the drum one, we had like boost snares at 200 bus kit. You know, we'll give you tips, but it's not like something we can just do a tutorial and you'll be able to follow it. And like, ah, oh, suddenly I'm a mix engineer because it doesn't mm -hmm. do well like that. Yeah. Uh, and mastering is not something we really do ourselves. Uh, you know, if we want to do kind of a home master, we'd whack a limiter. The Sony Oxford limiter is really good. You just whack that on your master bus if you want to send out a demo or just make a tune so you can DJ it out and it's not like loads quieter than the other tune. Simple. Anyway, so that's the thing yeah. we're not doing. But yeah, I think on, yeah, on that, um, <laughs> yeah, that's what we're not doing. But yeah, just <laughs> briefly on that, um, I think uh, the more of these we do, the more you'll kind of pick up on those little bits. It's not like, like you said, you can't really do it all in one, but I think across the series of these, I think yeah. you'll kind of get the gist of it. A lot we'll, do, we'll do like tips on mixing, and if you need like tips about certain things, remember Dodge's Q&A, 10 o'clock GMT every Sunday, half an hour, ask me anything you want, I'll answer it. Keeps them off the streets. It does, it does, <laughs> yeah, it keeps me in my room. Um, right, okay, so without further ado, I think right. we're going to move on. We, we're doing Python today, um, yeah. which if you haven't bought already, make sure you do go and buy a copy. I'm just going to put that here for no apparent reason, you know, it's, it's, it's just where I keep it. Yeah. Um, so, Chris, so so cool. Start. Right. Yeah. So essentially, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be a bit of an overview due to time constraints and whatnot. But um, I'm gonna show you a couple of bits, very select bits out of Python that I think are kind of. Firstly, will be the lead line out of the intro, intro of the tune, and how a very simple piece of automation can change it from sounding, say, if it was just cut off straight, to blending it into the breakdown a little bit. And I mean, within the track, you probably barely even notice it, but it makes that little bit of difference. And it's tips like these that kind of round off and polish off a track a bit nicer than you know you exactly. it's, it's all about blending the sections we're going to cover how we go from an a to a b section there and stuff like that just like so it doesn't sound abrupt and it doesn't sound like oh where's that come from anyway. yeah 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 exactly so um, i'm just going to i'm sure you've all heard the tune seeing as it's so good and all um <laughs> <laughs> he's so um, modest <laughs> Um, I'm just going to solo the lead group out of um, the introduction and play the last two the bars, down. and then um, what I'll do first and foremost is cancel all of the automation so it's it's dry without any automation and you hear what it sounds this like. This is what it would have sounded like if it didn't have all the automation on it. There you go, it's, it just stops. Yeah, um, and obviously that would be really abrupt and wouldn't sound right. Yeah. And then, as you can see here, I've drawn in some very simple automation on some a couple of different plugins. Um, the first one is a high-pass filter, and as you can see, it's automated to turn on, which is this one here. And obviously, automation varies from sequence to sequence. Yeah. Before we go any further, we, we, it's clear. You know, obviously, we're doing some Cubase. We're not going to tell you how to use automation because that would be impossible to cover all of them in the time we've got, and it's different for every sequencer. But for something like as how to as that, read the manual, look tell you how to do it. What we're going to show you is how to use it, not by like, if you the creative use of these yeah, plugins and how to use them effectively to the like a good yeah, advantage. And, and, the, and the theory is the same. For Whatever sequence we've used, Reason, Ableton, whatever, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, those of you who use Cubase, this will make this, you'll recognize this. Yeah. But, but I mean, automation mains tend to be relatively similar in most yeah. sequences. So, here, I mean, it's dead simple. There's a bypass switch to turn on the filter and then a frequency sweep here going up. So, it sweeps out sort of. And I'll, um, I'll just turn off the delay as well. So, you just hear that one. So, let me solo that first. So, so that fills fills up. up and that gets rid of it just to give it a bit of space and then uh, the other one that I added in was a simple delay um, with quite a high feedback um, as you can see here this is the feedback which I've automated the feedback is the um, amount of delay the delay length how long it goes on for yeah how much it keeps going through delaying um, so in combination with the filter and adding maximum delay and here this lane here is the wet dry so that's the delay coming in there and that's the feedback and as you can see over time I've automated it to fade out because otherwise that would carry on going throughout yeah. the track and you so basically the delay isn't really Really on it before just before the breakdown, but just before it goes into the breakdown, the amount of the, the, the delay is being used gets sent up, sort of thing. So, it, anyway, yeah, yeah, right, right, just play it and you can hear it. It's the easiest yeah. way. Um, I'll just play the last part. Oh, yeah. sorry, computer's lagging. 
and that's the effect there. And then in context of the track, just so you get a better idea. Obviously, it's subtle, it's it's subtle, subtle yeah. but it adds a. Um, it's kind of harking back to, to kind of the old trance effects where you know, on uh, in trance music, say back in the day, they would have lots of delay just for that um, for its namesake. Really, it kind of gives you that spatial kind of semi trippy sound. It's just a yeah. cool little effect, basically. Yeah, it's all about just making kind of the sections flow into each other so yeah. that they don't seem so separate and abrupt. Right, um, moving on because. Uh, we best do. We're gonna have to rush this a bit, yeah. so we're gonna give you. Like I said, these are like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these. Um, uh, the next one is going to be uh, one of the mid bass noises out of the, the main drop of the tune. And again, what I'll do is I'll play it without any automation. Play them a bit. As oh, as okay, as okay as yeah, yeah. In the tune. In first. the tune, yeah. You'll so. recognise this bit. I'm um, just leading into it. There you yeah. go. It's that weird bass, vocally slightly weird so sound play, there. Play it. We'll just play it, it as it is. There you go, on its own. <laughs> okay, bit of an aggressive sound, but I like that kind of thing. Um, I can hear a cat scratching. <laughs> um, right, without automation, uh, this is what you get. And that's completely different, and that's um, ha, much <laughs> a bit yeah, the, the tune's namesake. Um, yeah, and that's it. Doesn't it just sounds like a straight weird noise? Um, I've just added. I mean, the MIDI notes are dead simple in there. You can s probably just see the um, things here. That's the rhythm, of the notes, and there's a pitch. That's on legato single note mode, so that pitch blends up a little bit. Simple. Yeah, it's glide. Glide. Yeah, uh, glissando. And uh, here, what I've got is a standard, pretty standard in dubstep. Is a automation for the LFO speed. So that's the rate at which the LFOs in the particular synth yeah. are affecting it. We haven't got time to go into exactly yeah. all of that, but you know, anyone that uses massive yeah. or raise anything, you should understand why it has. So, I mean, simply put, you can see here: slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, and you can hear that affecting the sound. I'll play it again. <laughs> kind of comes across, and this one here would just be. I'm using razor for this particular noise, and the second one here is the end of the tone. You can hear it go jong jong jong, and that's what that automation line is there. Jong jong jong. You can kind of see the rhythm in the notes. <laughs> Now that's in Razor. There's it will be one of the filters. Yeah. Automation. He's basically randomly kind of played with stuff and automated to make it sound cool, which yeah. is something we always talk half on about. Yeah. People say, "How do you do this?" And like the, the key is just to play with it, man. Yeah. So I mean, so, so turning that completely weird, boring sound into something quite interesting, simply by automating. And the bottom one here will be another. Um, yeah, that's a, that's another filter automation of sorts there. Yeah, so it's just kind of added random textures in. Yeah, basically. yeah. And that, and obviously these automations are synced with the triplet timing that this tune is in. So um, that's another thing: is doing filter sweeps in time with the actual rhythm of the track, and that can give you what almost sounds like a different sample, but is in fact just the same synth but just being automated in time essentially yeah if that made any sense yeah. <laughs> apologies if this is going quite going a bit quick for you guys um obviously quite a lot of people recently have been asking can we have some more intermediate tutorials rather than the basics ones so if this is losing some of you um sorry but it is quite yeah we haven't got much time i'd, I'd, I'd quite like to think that we'll do enough of these that over time everything yeah. will make sense go, if, if, if this is kind of confusing you go back and watch the early ones about bass lines i guess yeah anyway so i guess the next the, th the thing a lot of people ask is how you kind of blend a, what we call an A section into a B section. So, for example, say your main drop, yeah, 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 you know, your mental bit, it's, like it's your A section. And then after like 16 or 32 bars, you, like, a lot of people go into like a more musical B section just to chill it out a little bit, either before the A section comes back in or before you get to the, to the middle breakdown. Now, there's lots of ways of kind of blending that because obviously, if you've got this mental bit, it's going, and ding, ding, ding. Yeah, you know, it's, kind of, it's going to just be abrupt. It will so sound there's, weird. There's loads of ways you can do that. So, like getting like a, a filter. Like anything that can do like a high pass filter, so you know, you can go like and it kind of filters up. Doing shit like that, like for like either the bar, the first bar before, kind of slowly bringing it up, and then like, like what Chris did before the break, first breakdown, putting a delay on one of the noises that's quite high passed. Um, also, I mean, things like taking the sub bass out for the last bar before it goes into the B section is good because then it has more energy when the A, when the next section comes in and it doesn't just feel like it's just gone yeah so well here you can good. see i'll show you a couple of brief examples of what dodge was talking about there and um the first one would be on another synth now this this is a sort of background synth within the tune that just adds a bit of texture and melody and you know nice bits to the song 
um, and it comes back in in the B section. But um, this is where the, the B section comes in. Excuse me. This is where the B section comes in is here. But obviously, for the blending, to make that not seem so abrupt, it's a very, very dead simple filter um, that brings it in a couple of bars before. That's just like that's just a low pass filter kind yeah, of open. I mean, a, anyone that's ever played with the synth will, you know, would have done that a million and one times. Yeah. But that's just a small example of the blending effect. So bringing in one of the elements before the actual section of the bar comes in, just a bit before, just to smooth it across and give, yeah. give the listener a, um, a cue. A, a cue. That's yeah. So basically, you hear like a little one of the sections of the B section just before the B section comes in, so it kind of introduces it and it feels a lot less abrupt. I know this might seem a little bit kind of weird and contrived, but if you try it, trust me, it just it just kind of makes things flow in yeah. a more deliberate manner. Because yeah. the last thing you want it to sound like is it's like clumsy, like, yeah. oh, they didn't know what they're doing, it's just gone from one idea to the next. You want to sound like, a, oh, you know, they really meant it to do that yeah. sort of thing. One other, um, one other thing that's used heavily throughout our tracks is our build up and uh, break down swoosh effects, kind of yeah. the, the classic noises that are in a thousand and one sample packs. Vengeance sample packs, yeah. effects volume one and two, as absolutely loads of them. Those called like down sweep, up sweep, sweep. stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and let me just for instance, right? This is the bit just before the uh, blending of the A to there's the actually B. actually five of them in there. No, yeah, there's, 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 there's probably more. <laughs> about yeah, it's seven um, of them running in total with different yeah. length. Yeah, um, just I mean, they will be timed up to other bits in the bar, but um. I've just played a couple of bars before just to get an idea because it You can see that one of those effects has got a delay on it again to help the smoothing process so it doesn't sound like it stops so dead. Um, and that's a key with these with these wind up noises and almost without exception I'll always do is roll off all the bass. So like yeah. either high pass it or EQ it out because the thing is you don't want it clashing and sounding abrupt, you want it to kind of just be a kind of yeah. A thing that people don't even really notice is there. It's just it kind of builds this energy yeah. and expectation. Like if you're build, so for example, you're building a build up for your drop, and you just it just seems to come out of nowhere. I literally find if you've got like a kick, boom, 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 maybe like introduction your baseline something before it is. If you just lay a load of these squish noises like build up, I mean like ones that go and like another one that goes like. All this kind of stuff. It just the thing about dance music is, and I know a lot a lot of people might hate me for saying this, but there is it is inherently predictable and kind you of bastard. needs to be. Fuck you. <laughs> it needs to be inherently predictable because people want to expect. Our people want to know. Oh, the drop's coming. Get ready for the drop, and you know, ready so people know how to jump to dance. You know, it, it's kind of you want to tell people what's coming next yeah. without making it too necessarily predictable. Just yeah, kind of you know, yeah. people need cues. So all this kind of stuff makes it all seem less abrupt. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, and also blending. what what I just showed you there was the um, the wind up noises coming into something, and obviously the opposite is true of when it actually drops. So I think there's a couple here. Yeah, you can have like a well done, like a. <laughs> so it's literally it's it's kind of that feeling, isn't it? It's being brought up, and then when something changes, it kind of smooths it across. So I'll just, I'll just play a couple of those because you don't need to play them. We'll just get the idea. But this is the one bar before, and then here these two here will be the bar after. <laughs> So you can hear that, and that's precisely what I'm talking about. And that over, over the blends between the A's and B sections, the build-ups, the breakdowns, wherever there's a change in the timbre of the track, like those work wonders for yeah. achieving that blending effect. And and Dyer sort was saying a kit, one of the keys to using them correctly is to make sure that the, the low end is cut out of all and the, the bass of out of all those sounds because otherwise it's gonna it's just gonna make the track a mess. So you want to keep them clean. In certain and, circumstances, and you cut. might be able to get away with it. Like if it's on its own, you, you deliberately want to. Well, oh, yeah, in a build, in a build, uh, yeah. build up or break down that can work with. The Generally sub speaking, when, when, then it's, when there's other elements going, you just want to take all the bass out of them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I know I, I'm, I know it's quite a hard topic to cover. Hopefully that kind of. Well, let me sense. show you a quick example of the, the. I mean, we do this quite often in our tracks. Here, oh, yeah. this is just on the. Um, uh, uh, first breakdown. Oh, well, this might be the second breakdown, but yeah, I'll just play it to you with a few of the effects on. Um, this is a standard, right? I'll play it leading into it. Oh, you're not going to hear anything. Yeah, and then. So I don't think it's, it's the mic picked that up, but there's like a, yeah. boom, boom, a big something. sub, which I could actually even say. I mean, yeah. everyone hears what a sub boom sounds, sounds like. Anyway. Yeah. So we're out of time, uh, unfortunately, mm. as usual. I know it's hard to cover everything. Hopefully, because I know a lot of people have been asking about blending and automation. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, yeah. If it didn't, tell us. Yeah, we, we <laughs> can do another one. Um, like anyway. I said before, we can do this. We can do thousands of these. You know. Anyway. Q&A next, next Sunday, every Sunday, 10pm GMT. And make sure to subscribe and buy that. See ya!